Well, that's not a beerger. Nope! It's lasagna time! I'm gonna push back the sea. You're gonna fall to your knees. I'm gonna howl at the moon like it's made for me. Welcome to the new series, Not a Beerger. This is my homemade lasagna recipe. Get ready. Gonna take a pound of ground pork, a pound of 85-15 ground beef, and a pound of veal. And we're just going to mix this up with our hands. Get your hands in there and mix up that burger meat. Now, once you get that all mixed up, combined, we're going to get a hot pot of oil. And we're just going to plop, plop that meat up in there. And get it all chopped up and ground into tiny, tiny little bits. And then season it with salt and pepper. All right, now we're going to dice up one whole onion. And just cut thin little strips along those pretty little lines in that onion. Use your knife, use your fingers to hold it together, and then once you get those strips, just cut them. You don't need to cut it crossways, just cut it right down the center. So chop up a whole onion, and now we're just going to go back to our beef. Make sure it's chopped up nice and tiny little bits. You want those bits tiny in there. And now we're going to take our beef and put it into a bowl to set aside for later. Do not drain out that delicious juice make sure you get all that delicious burger that's a ton of flavor that's going to go into your sauce now let's take a healthy amount of olive oil let's throw our onions in there and season them with salt and let's just stir them around and you're just going to cook those for four to five four to five minutes and then you're going to throw in four garlic cloves i use my garlic press here as you can see uh, but you're welcome to just dice them up with a knife so get that all incorporated in there, and then we're going to start adding our tomato paste. So I added four of these little cans of tomato paste, and you can use bigger cans. I just couldn't find them at the grocery store at the time. So tomato paste, you want to cook. So make sure you cook it out for a couple minutes, and then add three 28-ounce cans of whole peeled tomatoes. And you're welcome to use your hands and get grimy up in there and squeeze and break up those tomatoes. I just like to use my little wooden spatula there and cough them up. And then we use the immersion blender. This is my favorite tool for making sauce because it just makes the sauce so smooth and velvety. And who doesn't want velvety sauce? You know what I'm saying? Now we're going to add two teaspoons of dried parsley two teaspoons of oregano, one teaspoon of dried mint. You want that one teaspoon of mint in there, two teaspoons of dried basil, and one teaspoon of red pepper flakes. And let's go ahead and stir. Come get that all incorporated into your sauce. And boy, it's starting to look delicious, isn't it? And so once we get that in there, now we're gonna take a couple pinches of salt, get that stirred in there, now we're going to bring our meat back into the pot, and you can see that I have changed pots because I underestimated how much was going to fill that other pot. So get your meat and all of its juices stirred into your sauce now. And now we're going to put about 10 cranks of the pepper mill into there and then stir again. And now we're going to go ahead and just let this simmer. Ooh, almost forgot about this. You want to put one and a half teaspoons of white sugar into this mix. And now we add about three quarters of a stick of butter chopped into cubes and pecorino, 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 pecorino cheese time. If it's not pecorino, you're not making this lasagna. You've got to have fresh pecorino cheese, the flavor that pecorino cheese brings into this lasagna, into everything else it touches, just blows the mind. So we want to chop up, I'd say, about a cup. We want a cup of that in there, stir it into your sauce, and wow, look at the color. And then once that cheese begins to melt, your sauce just really begins to smell amazing. And now we're just going to let this simmer for about an hour. And it just keeps to come back every now and then and stir it. If you're using a nonstick pan, you don't have to really worry about much. Uh, so just come back and stir it every now and then. Let's go make our filling. Now we're going to do two eggs. We're just going to beat those eggs up in that bowl. Now we're going to bring in one big container of ricotta cheese. And I, I don't know, I think this is like 28 ounces or 32 ounces, something like that. And then bring in the rest of the grated pecorino, pecorino, pecorino cheese and add a little salt and pepper. And I always add, oh, I added another egg into there. So two eggs total. 
uh, into the ricotta cheese blend. And we're just going to add a little bit of pepper. And we're going to add some dried basil and some dried parsley. Just sprinkle it in there. No real need to measure. Who needs to do that? Just, just dumpy dumpy into your ricotta cheese. And get that all incorporated into there. And set it aside to wait for your sauce to be completed. And, oh, now this is where we get controversial. I do not use dried mozzarella cheese. I use the fresh stuff. The moisture-rich, super juicy, delicious mozzarella cheese. And I grate it all up there. And it doesn't grate the best, but that's okay. Now, this is my secret. I take Silagini. Now, Silagini are little tiny fresh mozzarella balls. I cut them in half. And you're going to see what we do with those next here. But you want to use all of those little mozzarella balls, cut them in half, and set them aside for when we begin building. Now our sauce looks perfect. It is just about done. Now it's going to be time to build the lasagna. Okay, now we've got our pan, and we're just going to put a little bit of sauce down at the bottom. And we take uncooked lasagna noodles i know <gasps> gasp uncooked i do not cook them i let the oven and the sauce and the cheese cook my noodles for me and it comes out perfect every time you want to put a layer of your delicious ricotta cheese blend onto the first layer and then we take a layer of our homemade sauce Ugh, just the combination of bright colors here is amazing now Another layer of uncooked noodles. <gasps> yep, uncooked noodles again. That's how we do it. Get over it. And now we're going to put a little bit more ricotta cheese and a little bit more and a little bit more. Smooth it out. Don't don't press too hard, though. You know, and we're going to add some more sauce. And this is how we do it. We just keep good. Oh, man. It's it's just keep keeps growing. <gasps> More uncooked noodles. Yay! Okay, and now we put <laughs> we put some more ricotta cheese down onto this layer. And now here is where we add our mozzarella balls. Yep, we're going to just keep doing the ricotta cheese though. A little bit more of that. And to make sure you spread that out so it's smooth across all of the noodles. And now we add our layer of sauce. Make it saucy. Don't worry. It's going to leak out of this pan, and that's okay. So <laughs> what we're going to do is lay our balls in a nice, fashionable order, almost like a bunch of little little, little cheesy half-heads just, just sitting on top of this row of the lasagna. Leave no stone unturned. Just put them all down, and then we take some more noodles and place those on top of there. And now... More sauce, and here is where we add our fresh mozzarella cheese. Now, since we have those little balls underneath this layer, you want to uh, not push hard. You got to really balance. It's a kind of a balancing act. Once it melts, it'll all stick together, so don't worry. So take your fresh mozzarella grated cheese and put it all on top here. Look at all that juice just stirring around on the side. You want to see that. Don't worry. And take your extra balls. If you got some balls left, put your balls on top of that. Cover it with foil. Seal up the edges. And now we're going to throw it into a 400 degree oven for 50 minutes. Make sure you set your pan on top of a pan like that. Now, make garlic bread because it's lasagna. If you don't have garlic bread with your lasagna, you probably shouldn't even be making lasagna because ha, I'm telling you. So let's just take some butter, melt it down with like two cloves of garlic, and then take your brush and just brush. Now I do my garlic bread just one side. I get some flack from that, but that's okay. I like it soft on the other side and crunchy on one side. It just melts in your mouth. And now it's been 50 minutes. Look at it. Just look at it. Oh, look at that cheese and the sauce. It's just the most beautiful color. And then take a fork and poke holes kind of all throughout and then let that sit for about 10 to 15 minutes to, to set up and cool. Now our garlic bread is done. We put it under the broiler. Look at those little charred bits of garlic. That's I love that. All right, let's slice it and see how it looks. Oh, baby, it's so cheesy. It's so rich. When you make this lasagna, you are solving the world's problems. I'm telling you, if the entire world were to make this lasagna, we would all love each other immensely. You just take one bite and look. Oh, here it comes. 
Oh my goodness gracious. Look look at that. Jesus, just awesome. Okay, that piece fell apart a little bit. So you want to make this sit you want to let this sit a little bit and rest. You can see the steam just coming out from under there. Uh, but all that meat and the sauce just holds and soaks into those noodles. And that's why I don't cook my noodles, because everything just soaks in there. Now this piece came out nice and whole. That cheese is just oozing out of it. Oh yes, those layers are perfect. I love this lasagna. There it is. It's perfect. And no, oh, yes, we put a piece of prosciutto on it. What? Absolutely. And sprinkle more. Pecorino, 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 pecorino. Enjoy, my friends. Mm -hmm.